Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this Christmas morning. Welcome to the Newman Center, and um, many faces are very familiar, but many uh, faces are also new. We welcome all of you um, here at the Newman Center, Holy Spirit Parish. For those of us who haven't been here in a while, we welcome you home. And um, as you have noticed, there have been many changes since you might have been here last. And some of those changes, of course, are the social distancing. And um, during this time of our global pandemic, we have to wear our masks at all times while in the center. Also, for Holy Communion today, um, is a reminder that to stay in your seats, and the Minister of Holy Communion will bring uh, the Sacred Host to you. To receive Holy Communion, uh, you will put on your hands to receive Jesus. And the, the Minister will come up to you and say, the Body of Christ, you say, Amen. And then um, you can remove your mask briefly to receive Holy Communion. And then you replace your mask over your face and then over your mouth. In accordance with our um, city and county guidelines, we are now allowed to, and the Austin guidelines and directives, we're now to allow to have a small choir for our uh, Christmas masses and our Christmas season. But that means that also our congregational singing is still prohibited. So please join in by singing in your head. <laughs> or um, prayerfully uh, listening to the sacred songs today, the song, the mass parts, to just um, prayerfully uh, participate. Also, um, your tithes and offerings are very important to us. It helps us to continue our mission here at the Newman Center. And because of the COVID um, pandemic, we are unable to pass the basket during this time. But as we have entered today, you may notice our calabash right in the middle of the church. And I thank you um, for your generosity. Uh, you may have already dropped your offerings today, or you may do so um, at the end of Mass. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries of God being with us, let us acknowledge our sins, asking the Lord for his pardon and his strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting love. Thank you.
break out together in song, O rooms of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him. And without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came from t for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among, among us. And we saw his glory, to the glory of the Father's own house, of only Son, full and full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received, grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed Him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! It probably feels very hard to keep the merry in Merry Christmas this year, doesn't it? Our celebrations are smaller this year. We won't be able to feel the arms of our friends and, and family members far away in a Christmas hug. We will miss so many of the usual Christmas traditions, and we might just not be the, we might not just have that feeling this year with this ongoing pandemic. While it is right to grieve, it is also right to rejoice because we are still so blessed, aren't we? It is still wonderful to know that God is with us. And Christmas Day is the day that that we have long awaited in the history of salvation. It is the day that the Lord became incarnate, and He is the Prince who brings us peace. You see, for through His incarnation, Jesus changes everything for us. Not just the whole world, but all of creation has been changed because God became flesh and dwelt among us. Our first reading from the prophet Isaiah is fulfilled in his birth, ministry, and life. The prophet Isaiah proclaims how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the one who brings the good news. Well, Jesus is the one who brings to us good news of love, peace, hope, happiness, and salvation. 
Therefore, all who have waited faithfully, patiently, and vigilantly must shout for joy because God is with us. Isaiah calls us to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And it is a call to adore and worship the newborn king. It is a call to be joyful and announce the good news. You see, in the time of the prophet Isaiah and in the time of the birth of Jesus, there were brutal governments, constant battles, wars, fears, and unrest amongst the people. The people were constantly saying, when will we not be afraid? When will we not fear? When will all this go away? Sound familiar? In our own time, we see and hear about brutal governments that separate children from families seeking better living conditions. In our own time, we still see and hear of the terrorist attacks around the world, the ongoing wars in Syria. For the Lebanese, the feeling of being abandoned, or the conflict over political or religious differences here and even in the Middle East. With the many Christian refugees from the very land that we call holy, we ask, when will we no longer be afraid? Or we look into our own lives and see our marriages going through a rough patch, or having financial difficulties, or struggling through the pandemic, physically, mentally, and spiritually, we ask, when will all of this go away? Just as the prophet said to a people in darkness, a light has come, he says to us. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is the light of the world who dispels all darkness even in the midst of our trials and tribulations because Jesus changes everything. St. John the Evangelist says in our Gospel today, all things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In other words, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn it and bring the wrath of God. But rather, He came so that we might have life, and life abundantly. Christmas is certainly different this year, but let's be reminded that God has redeemed us and reshapes our daily fears, our trials and tribulations, and He turns them into hope. In her book, Amazing Grace, A Vocabulary of Faith, Kathleen Norris writes, quote, For me, the incarnation is the place, if you will, where hope contends with fear, not an antique doctrine at all, but reality, as ordinary as my everyday struggles with fears, great and small, as exalted as the hope that allows me some measure of peace when I soldier on in the daily round. End of quote. Just think, the first people to, make, to meet the Savior face to face were the shepherds. Shepherds did not live with the people of Bethlehem. They lived with the sheep and they smelled like the sheep. So to the people of Bethlehem, the shepherds lived on the outside because the shepherds lived on the margins of society. But what does that teach us? God loves the unlovely, the shepherds. And if anybody that says that the world says is unlovely, God loves them. 
In God's eyes, everybody is lovely. And so God loves us, each one of us, uniquely. Then we look to Mary and Joseph, who traveled a long, arduous journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And for the people of Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary were a poor peasant couple, unimportant. But in God's eyes, they were the most important people of Bethlehem that night. You see, God loves what the world says are unimportant people. In God's eyes, we are all important. God loves us no matter what. And I think this is the year that many of us, our brothers and sisters who are alone and afraid, who don't feel loved, need to be reminded of that, huh? That God loves them. He loves each one of us uniquely. And because of that, we have a hope for a future as God envisions. Christmas is a new beginning. It is a reminder that we are loved by God, who took on our imperfect life, and He redeemed it by His own life, death, and resurrection, and ascension. He now sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, but He also comes to us at this altar, in mystery, to feed us, to give us nourishment and food for the journey. For it is the tangible sign that God is truly with us. And He sends us out this day to carry the light into the world and to work and to continue to spread the good news so that all the ends of the earth will see the saving power of God. May we, my dear brothers and sisters, lead from this Christmas Mass as instruments of faith, hope, love, joy, and peace. For you see, unto us a Savior has been born. Let us rejoice and be glad because of him. Merry Christmas. And so now together we proclaim what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the peace of the holy season, let us pray. For the nations and peoples of the world, that the sun of justice may dawn upon all lands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children and young people, that they may know the joy of Jesus' coming every day of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the suffering, and the forgotten, and for those who must spend this day alone, that in the miracle of Christ's birth they may experience the healing and hope of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our benefactors, friends, and supporters, that God will reward them for their kindness to us and continue to bless our ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our book of prayers and for those we now mention. For my cousin, Bill, for the loss of his son, Matt, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For my brother Larry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are living today, care for the sick, for the aged, and soul, and the love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially those in our families, and for Manuel Lagoa, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. For the end of this pandemic, for all those who have been affected by COVID-19 through illness and death, and in other ways, let us pray to the Lord. For all Christian families, that they continue to foster the faith in their domestic churches this Christmas season, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Gracious God, your love knows no limit, your compassion no end. Hear the prayers we make as we celebrate your most perfect gift to your human family, the Messiah Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as the one God forever and ever.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us holy, pleasing in your sight, and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Son, 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Henry Newman and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look down on our sins with the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so that he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated for just a moment. Thank you for joining us on this Christmas day. Uh, December 25th, on this interesting 2020 year. Certainly, um, this has been an uh, interesting year, and that we thank you for joining us on this uh, Christmas Day, those here physically and those on our live stream. Um, as a reminder, our obligation for Sunday Mass is dispensed until the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. And depending on the um, pandemic, the bishop will review uh, if he will extend that or not. But he does encourage, and I encourage you, if you are able and feel comfortable to come to Sunday Liturgy, to please join us um, so that we can continue to gather as the people of God to pray for the people of the world and for ourselves. So, but thank you um, once again, and have a blessed Christmas season. Holy New Year, and we hope to see you uh, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is already the feast of the Holy Family. Yeah, uh, it's the weekend, so we hope to see you this weekend. 
I want to say a special word of thanks to our liturgical ministers, our lecturer Cheryl, thank you, and our Eucharistic minister, um, our extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, Donna, our wonderful altar servers, uh, Sabrina, and our seminarian, Brother Chris Milano. And in a special way, I want to thank our wonderful Christmas choir. You know, this is the first time we get to sing together. And we hope that we all sing all pieces and we can continue to have a choir throughout this Christmas season and hopefully and beyond. Um, and also, I want to say a special thanks to my wonderful staff, because I don't think I would be able to get through this whole season, this Advent season, especially at Christmas preparations. Uh, my administrative assistant, Alofa uh, Lea Siolangi, who was with me all day yesterday from morning to night. So I want to thank her and also our campus minister, Faye Pavo, for being here with us today on this Christmas day. And our sacristan and uh, live stream person, JB, um, so thank you. Have a blessed week and we hope to see you soon. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined, illumined this most holy day. Drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of His peace and favor, and make you sharers with the Church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.